No niin, mä oon kuvattu juup! My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about double throttle bodies um, or secondary throttle bodies or yeah, it goes on <laughs> so basically you'll have your throttle body like so and you'll have a butterfly in it and then you'll have another butterfly in it now a lot of you will say oh I know what this is for, this is like carbs this is like where you have your slide for your carb and then you have your choke plate in front of it no, not really. Um, secondary throttle bodies are all about the subject we were talking about earlier, which was high velocity porting. Now, when you do high velocity porting, um, and people have dynoed this, people have done Moto Man's shit and all the rest of it, when you do high velocity porting, you'll have your. Uh, power curve and what have you, you know, and it'll look like this, and then they'll do <coughs> a bit of JB Weld, a bit of bullshit, monkey shit, snot in it, and, you know, it'll do this, right, I won't do that, fucking hell, it'll do that, right, and you'll go, oh fucking hell, look at the low end though, and then they'll show you the torque, and they'll show you that low end torque goes up. So what we're going to do is talk about how high, high velocity porting works and the fact that what they're talking about is absolute fucking rubbish. So, you have two scenarios. You have port number one, with it's a horrible port with a valve stuck in it and your cylinder, right? And then you have port number two with the same kind of trick, right? But then you have this big bulb for your high velocity, right, which is what they're talking about. A motor man and all these idiots say that you produce more power. No, you don't um, overall, uh, over the entire rev range, because the power that's calculated by, um, you know, dynos and stuff tells you peak power. Yes, you can do all the area under the graph and that'll tell you how an engine is performing outright. However, what's happening is is at slow RPM, so when you're you know idle to about just before you hit your power band, the engine is chugging along, and the problem is it's outside is still, and your engine is violently pulling in air, or it's enticing air in, it's compressing it, pushing it out, it's doing all the rest of it, and when you pull down your piston, the air outside has to go from still to accelerate to fill your cylinder. And the problem is, is that when the air inside your manifold is still just like the air outside, or its flow is quite slow, because your engine's chugging along quite slow, what happens is, is that you do not fill your cylinder enough. You do not fill your cylinder correctly. And this is all to do, in a sense, it's all to do with the momentum and velocity of airflow, mass flow rates, and all that shit. But in a sense, it's your fucking air's been lazy. You know what I mean? You're going at a lazy speed, you know, your engine's on tick over or two, three, four thousand RPM. It's not racing its tits off. You know, the engine's been lazy, so the air's going to be lazy. It's kind of like that. So what happens is, with your high velocity porting by sticking some JB weld in there or a bump or whatever, when you pull down, you are creating, um, in a sense, a lower, lower pressure because you're thinning it. The mass airflow is reduced your velocities and your port velocity increases so your engine actually does make a bit more torque and then because that's over time makes a bit more power this all makes sense so it does work but it only works when your engine is on the lower section of its rev range so um, we'll just get rid of that for a second when you look at your rev range and we'll just say it's like a rev gauge like that so here's idle that's a thousand and let's just say here's over here that's ten thousand right your power band generally due to engine design is between here and here right this is your power band this is where your engine likes to breathe wonderfully 
and all the rest of it and it trails off before you get to the red line is beyond the 10,000 and that's when it really doesn't it starts to fall off again you know, it starts to fall off that hill with using high high velocity porting <coughs> you're extending your power band in essence to over here like this which might seem like a good thing and for acceleration yeah it is quite a good thing but these guys who look at peak power graphs and say they've earned you know 20 percent peak power the year fucking lie that's just rubbish you will get an increase in torque lower down you know what i mean it's just as simple as that where when your engine actually gets into its power band the reason why power bands exist is because the air velocity in your ports it's going then it's stopping then it's going then it's stopping but at least <coughs> the whole system is starting to flow quite well so then your optimum port design is a regular port design and that's the pro that's the thing the manufacturers know that you're going to spend most of your time in the power band your gearbox has been designed to basically flick the rev range inside your fucking power band close ra close ratio gearboxes even more so designed to flick within that power band so by saying put some JB weld in your ports and motorman goes on about all ports are too big he's misunderstood how it works and this is the beauty this low torque um, increase by restricting the size of your ports at lower RPMs has not been missed by anybody it has not been missed by Suzuki, Honda, Yamaha, Kawasaki, Dekai it has not been missed what they do is they put a secondary throttle body. So here's your throttle body in your engine. Here's your ports, like so. Shit drawing, I know. There's your valve, right? And how do you control your engine? Well, you have a, a you know a throttle plate. That's basically how you meter how much air because this hole is the size this hole is because this part this port has a surface area because it has a volume then you have to throttle it somehow so you have a butterfly to do that a butterfly is the cheapest it is very quite it's quite predictable it is a restriction itself um, which you know they do they don't try and get around it's just that something has to be there you have to have some kind of flappy paddle and the beauty about a throttle bottle is a uh, body is and we'll go into this later in a different video is the fact that it's actually it's asymmetrical but in other respects in flow respects it's quite symmetrical as in the fact as if you had a flap that had a hinge at the top you're always going to have a shadow um that's going to be a low pressure region where with this it opens both sides so it tilts like this and there isn't this there's a shadow here but that's not too much of a problem um you, you're actually reducing the size of your shadow um, by flow size and all this, but we'll go into that later. But what you want to do is obviously is we want to change the size of this port. So Motorman and his fucking followers and idiots would go and stick a big glob of whatever here. Now <laughs> that's the wrong thing to do because when you go at high RPM, when you're at higher RPM in your power band, that is now detrimental and you are going to lose power. Or you are going to maintain the same power just because the, the cylinder can literally just suck it in it doesn't give a shit. So what they do is, is they add a second throttle body. They add a second throttle body to your actual entire system. So now what happens is, at low RPM, when you open this throttle, this can stay closed-ish. And that's why your secondary throttle body is controlled by the ECU. It is not controlled by you this is why it's controlled full stop and this is the reason why it's first it's first to the airbox because if this if your butterfly was here you'd be doing this with your throttle and then this would lag behind and that would be a stupid thing to do so basically what happens is is this is a restrictor play it is literally restricting your flow and then when you go fucking full whack throttle and go up into and you'll see how this opens it opens it opens minimally and then when you start to open up revs, it then starts to open up revs, no matter what you give it throttle-wise. So basically, at low RPM, you can basically pin that throttle, and this will open, and then there'll be a lag, and then this will open. And what this is doing is this is restricting basically your port size. You know, if this opens, just say, like this, 
and you've gone, you've just quickly demanded full throttle, but the engine hasn't caught up yet, it's still speeding up, then as you can see, you're doing this, which means that you're restricting the amount of air that can enter your ports. In a sense, it's almost like um, doing high velocity porting. The thing is, when you go full throttle and you need the biggest ports you can get your fucking little greedy mitts on, this thing opens fully 100%. And it basically remains like that, so it, is, it causes no restriction. It causes the same restriction as your throttle butterfly does, regardless. So that's why it's a good system. That's why it's used. It wasn't lost on these people, you know what I mean? It wasn't lost on all these engineers and all the rest of it. They fucking found this out first. So, if you see anybody, anybody doing high velocity porting and they've got secondary throttle bodies, they are wasting their fucking time completely. You can do it. And this is the thing. You could put a load of JB Weld on your old 1998, uh, 1992 <coughs> GPZ or something shit like that. You can do that. The problem is, is that you're going to basically start to choke out the engine at higher power when you're in the power band. You're just going to feel a bit lower down. You know what I mean? And like I say, this hasn't been lost on manufacturers. Your engines now with throttle bodies and all the rest of it have both. Why wasn't it used back in the day in the past for the simple fact is one, it was carbs. Number two is it's computer controlled. And these bike systems didn't have ECUs. You don't need injectors for it to work, and you can actually, and people have actually fit secondary throttle bodies, uh, you know, secondary uh, throttle valves to their engines, but you need a computer system to control it. You could use pressure and stuff like that, and a really elaborate system like some carbs do and all the rest of it. You can do that, and I think it might have been done twice, actually. I can think of uh, maybe two examples that might have it. Oh, a bit more fucking accelerator there, mate, before you fucking clonk it out. Yes, yeah, so you can do it on old, old school bikes, like I said. The problem is, if you start filling in your ports, you are cutting off your balls to spite your face. You know what I mean? You're going to gain lower torque. You are going to lose something. Or you are basically not going to get any gains when you actually go into the high RPM range. So, the question is, what's the fucking point? Because if you want to go fast, you keep your bike in the fucking... In the power band, this doesn't affect the power band. If it does, it's the very early stages of the power band. The whole point is, is that the power band is when the engine is breathing its best. So by restricting that breathing, you're a fucking idiot. Now, I know that, I can't remember the name of the system off the top of my head. I was thinking about it just before I started this video. There's a system, I think it was a Volvo one and a, a Saab one or whatever. Basically, where there's a flapping little paddle inside uh, the port, like it's like here. It's like a flappy little paddle to do the same thing, basically. There are some resonance chambers that have been done in the past and all the rest of it in some race vehicles where it's just basically an extra passage that opens and closes and blah, 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 and this, that, and the other. Um, yes, so, this also brings me on to the next video. It has to be a separate video so people take notice so it doesn't get lost in this video uh, about throttle bodies and all the rest of it. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.